In today's weekly Forex forecast, we're talking about how the price action last week could affect these markets in the week ahead, especially that failed move that we saw from the DXY on Friday. So we're talking about the DXY, the Euro, the Pound, the Dollar Yen, and also the Euro versus the Pound for the week ending April 12th, 2024. Now, before we get into today's video, guys, I do want to mention that if you want my help with your trading, including seeing my trades in real time, plus the upcoming course, be sure to click on the link at the top of this video, head over here to this page, sign up with my preferred broker, deposit $100 or more, trade at least one lot, and you are going to get a 30% deposit bonus, plus you're going to get lifetime access to our VIP group, which includes daily videos, my help with your trading in Discord, as well as the upcoming course, plus you're going to see my trades in real time. All right, so see the link in the description, guys, of this video, or if you're on the website, click on that broker link at the top of the page. So let's kick things off here with the DXY daily time frame. So this is the price action that we've talked about here for the past few weeks. And what you'll notice is that we do still have the market holding above the top of this channel, okay? Now, it's not the most well-defined channel because we don't have a, a clear, you know, first swing low down here. But still, you can see where recently the market did find support here on this candle following FOMC. So this was our FOMC candle. And you can see where it held up as resistance right here, this red candle. And then we got the breakout held up as support. Now it didn't quite test that level last week, okay, on Thursday, going into that NFP print. Now let's talk about that for a second because we did get a very hot print, okay, US jobs report on Friday. And we saw the DXY rally significantly. However, it did fail. It still closed green on Friday, but it mostly failed here on that breakout attempt. The reason for that is well known by anybody who's watched these recent videos because 104.45 has been a significant level for the DXY. And you can see back here, we did have a fake out, okay, a failed breakout above this, and that triggered a move lower for the DXY. Now, very similar situation here. We did have a retest up here. And once again, the market failed to hold above 104.45. So what I mentioned in Friday's video was that Friday's close was going to dictate whether this price action recently. Okay, so let's map this out. This price action here is very similar. Okay, basically a carbon copy of what we saw back here in February. So notice how we had a retest of 104.45, consolidation below, retest of 105, close back below, and a sell-off. Same thing over here, right? Retest of 104.45, consolidation below, retest of 105, and sell-off. So, so far, the price action here looks very similar to the top that we saw back there in February. Now, the one big difference here with the DXY is that we do have the market, once again, holding above that November trend line. Okay, so we do have support coming in here at obviously the low from Thursday, but also 103.6 to 103.8. Now let's talk about what we could see here for the week ahead from the DXY. Because right now we have a situation where markets are very sideways. I mean, the DXY, the majors, um, everything is just very sideways at the moment. It has been for most of the year so far. Um, and what I think that we could see here for the DXY. Now, in, before I talk, talk about this too, I, wanted, I do wanna say that this price action up here um, this back here was a fake out. Okay, so this was a failed breakout from the DXY, and that's when we got that pullback. Now, the difference this time is that this is technically not a fake out. And the reason for that is because this was not really a breakout because we already had this high back here at 105 that had established itself. So if we had gotten the move above 105, daily close above here, and then close back below, then that would be a fake out. But because we already had a high back here at 105, this is not technically a failed breakout. It's more of just a retest of the 105 resistance level. So I think that's a key distinction to make because typically a failed breakout or fake out is going to produce an extended move in the opposite direction like we saw back here. And I did want to point out that this is technically not a failed breakout. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look here at these wicks that we saw between Thursday and Friday. And I think that this is going to be a big driver for the week ahead because you tend to see wicks like this get filled. So we have this wick down here from Thursday, which so far, very shallow retrace. We have this wick from Friday, which obviously no retrace yet um, because that did end the week. Okay, so what I think that we could see here for the DXY is the market is most likely going to want to retest 104.45 again and fill in this wick up here from Friday. Okay, so we also have, again, this wick down here from Thursday. So 
what I think that we could see here, and I'm just expecting more range bound price action from these markets, because that's what we've seen for most of the year. And, you know, clearly the market is still telling you that it wants to consolidate here and it isn't ready to break out just yet. So what I think we could see here is maybe a move up here to test uh, 104.45 again, fill in that wick from Friday. And then from there, we probably get a flush down here into some of this sell side liquidity. Okay, so depending on how you trade, that could present an opportunity for the week ahead. Of course, we could see the DXY move lower first. So come down here and fill in Thursday's wick and then move up here. But either way, I think we're just dealing with a sideways market um, with our range really between this area up here at 104.45 resistance and support coming in down here right around 104. Okay, so more of the same in my opinion for the week ahead um, with these markets just ranging. Again, this is kind of the DXY telling you, you know, this move up here, right? The market failing to hold above 104.45. That's kind of the market telling you that it wants to range here and possibly come down here and take on some of this sell side liquidity from this breakout candle back here, right? So in my opinion, we probably see, you know, 104.45 hold up as resistance and a move down here into some of this liquidity closer to 104, maybe just below. Of course, what would change that would be a uh, close back above 104.45 on the daily time frame. If we got that, then that would show strength toward 105. All right, so next let's take a look here at the Euro USD, which like the DXY, obviously the inverse of the DXY essentially, um, this is also showing us that the market wants to just kind of range here. It's not making any significant moves so far, um, really so far this year, or even going back to late 2023, because like I mentioned recently, if you go all the way back here to over a year of price action, I mean, the market has just been sideways here. And so this is important to keep in mind because what this is telling you late last week is that the market just wants to do the same thing. You know, we're not seeing any significant moves here for the euro. And really, you could boil this down to an even tighter range here over the past few months like this. Now, this move down here, okay, below 108 is technically a failed breakout based on this trend line. Okay, so what you can see here, this is what we talked about last week, is off of this low from right back here, we have this low, and this low right before the breakdown. Now, the one thing I did mention last week in the video is that this retest right here, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you will realize that this was not a rounded retest. This was an immediate retest. There was no white space between that retest. That told you that there was a lot of strength here for the euro down in this area, right? A lot of buying pressure. And this told you that you probably did not want to be shorting through here. And that's why I did not short the euro. Now, what you're also going to notice is that right here on Friday, look at this wick. And we talked about this in discord, right? I pointed this out even before the market retest this and said, there's your retest right there. That's the market telling you that this level is in fact significant. Now, just like the DXY though, look at these wicks, right? Friday wick down here, Thursday wick up here. So you have the euro telling you that it wants to range more um, and also showing you where these imbalances are between Thursday and Friday. So like the DXY, what I think that we could see here um, would be a move down here to fill in this Friday wick. Now, this could happen in the in the opposite order, right? Of course, I don't know which way the market's going to go to start the week. But what I can tell you is that if we get the market moving up here in this area first, okay, so if we get a move up here first, then we are probably going to see a retest down here in this area to fill in that Friday wick. Now, if we get it moving lower first, okay, so something like this, down here to fill in Friday's wick, then we probably see a move up here to fill in that Thursday wick and retest the 108.65 level. So just more range bound price action here for the euro. I think that's the the most likely thing um, to expect for the week ahead. And you know, keep in mind too that we do have this trend line off of this high up here that is starting to become a little bit more significant. And you can see here that this is last week's high. There's still this candle back here, which we have seen a bit of a retracement of that, but not, you know, not a whole lot. So we could get something like this here for the euro where we take out last week's high, retest this level and then sell off. And if we look at the EXY, the euro index, it kind of backs that up because looking at the EXY weekly time frame, if we move all the way out here, this is what we've talked about in recent videos. So notice how we have this triangle pattern that broke down. So off of this high up here, we've got this high, this one, and this one. And the lower level, we've got this low down here, these two lows, and all this price action through here. The EXY never broke below this on a weekly closing basis. Now, if we move in here, you can see why I have this level drawn where I do. 
And you can also see where we could get a little bit of a, a sweep of last week's high. So looking here at these lows, you've got these two lows right down here. You've got all of these closing prices for the week. Notice this low right here before the breakdown. Now we have the market breaking below. And so far, we did get a slight retest of that last week, but not quite. So if we move in even closer here to the EXY weekly time frame, what you'll notice is that we have this trend line up here. Okay, again, this low right here told you where this level should be placed. We have last week's high coming very close to retesting it, but not quite. So what I think we could see is a move down here first, maybe move up here, take out this high, retest this area, and then you get some selling pressure, right? So if we again go back here toward the Euro USD, the reason this is going to matter is because we do have, again, we have this area up here, right? So where we could see the Euro come down here, fill in Friday's wick, that imbalance, right? Down here in this area, come up here, test this level, maybe consolidate below, come up here, tag that level, take out this high, and then continue to consolidate. Look, I don't know where these markets are going to go. I'm not trying to predict the future here, but I do think that based on the price action, this is the most likely scenario. Of course, what would change that would be if we see the euro breaking out from either, you know, down here in this area, breaking out down here on the daily, or of course, up here in this area, breaking out, right? That would tell us that the market wants to uh, gain some momentum here. But until that time, more range round price action is the most likely scenario for the euro USD. All right, so let's take a look here at the pound, which... Uh, this should be a little bit quicker than the euro video because this market is really starting to break down. I don't really like it um, anymore, unfortunately, because the technicals were setting up for something, um, you know, really nice here, which we haven't seen in 2024, really, from the pound. And you can see where we did have this descending channel off of these highs and lows. We got the breakout above and this breakout failed through this area. So if I move in here, you can even see where the daily and weekly charts we're telling you that this failed breakout was holding up because look through here. Okay, we got the close below. This close right here confirmed that this up here was a failed breakout. And you can see where this level held up as new resistance on a daily closing basis. Now, last week, okay, we got the move below these 125.90 lows. And what you'll notice is that we got the close below immediate retest again here. And we got the close back above both of those key levels. Now, Friday, we got a sweep of this candle here on Wednesday. All right, so imbalance down here in this area, we got a sweep of that. The market closed back above that channel resistance. So once again, here we go again, back and forth with the pound. So this is why I don't really, um, you know, favor trading this one right now. Uh, I do still have my short position on here that started up here at 1.28. I will most likely be out of that position uh, this week. The only way I'm staying in that position is if on Monday or Tuesday, we get the market, you know, moving down here in this area, closing down here to tell you that this price action up here was an anomaly. Okay. A liquidity sweep and nothing more. But so far it does kind of look like a reclaim and the market wants to come up here and take on some of this imbalance up here. All right. So if that's the case, then I will go ahead and exit those short positions, which, you know, on the whole are in profit because I do have a short on from 1.28. The other short right here in this area, which is currently a break even. So all in all, still a profitable trade, um, not the outcome I was hoping for, you know, but that's the way it goes sometime. And again, these trades were announced in real time in the VIP group. But ultimately, though, for the pound, really, you know, like other markets do, I think we're uh, looking at more range bound price action, maybe a move down here to sweep that Friday wick. All right. So move down here. This is going to be support now. So a move into here, sweep the, the Thursday wick up in this area, maybe take that out as well. Um, come up here into maybe like 1.27, maybe just above, and then maybe some selling pressure from there. All right, so you've got a little bit of a pivot through here on these highs and lows. Um, and again, I'm just showing you this just to kind of point out what I'm seeing in the market. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to be trading it this way, though, because that's not my style of trading. I like looking for failed breakouts, uh, liquidity sweeps, things like that. Uh, but this price action here is just more of the same here from the pound, right? Just more sideways action, more indecision, um, it was looking good until we got this close above late last week. All right, so next up, let's take a look at the dollar yen because this one is setting up to be quite interesting here over the coming weeks. I think if we get a break above 152, um, things will really start to get interesting for this market toward levels like 155.6, which I've showed in previous videos. That goes back to, I believe, the 155 levels from the 90s. Um, the higher levels up around like 170 or so are all the way back to like the 1970s. So you've got some really interesting levels that go back decades if we do get that 152 breakout. And I'll talk more about those in future videos if we do get that breakout. But for now, 
What I want to focus on here for the dollar yen is the potential for this ascending triangle. So we've talked about this before. We've got 152 resistance up here being tested, and we've got this ascending trend line off of these lows giving us this ascending triangle. Now, these patterns about 60 to 70% of the time do break higher. So it is a bullish pattern, but it's not a case where, you know, 80 or 90% of the time they break out. In fact, no pattern um, is that high. Uh, so looking here though at the daily time frame, right? This is what I'm looking at for the week ahead. Basically, we have a range here that has set up between 152 resistance. So this is our big macro level up here. And this high from back here, these highs, right around 150.9, all the way down toward about 150.7. So as long as the, the dollar yen is in this range, then we just have a range around market between these two levels. Now, the one thing that you do have to be careful of, though, is that we have equal highs that have built up up here. Okay, so very similar situation to what we saw right back here, right? Essentially equal highs. And we have that building up right now. So it doesn't mean, though, that we will see a sell-off like we got back here. The point with this is that liquidity is building up above these highs, very similar to what we saw back here. And if you'll remember, the liquidity that built up up here is why when the market was trading down here in this area, I was calling for a move back here above 151 to take out that liquidity. So what I'm saying here for the dollar yen is that this liquidity up here is going to serve as a magnet to where if we get a pullback, Okay, at some point down here at these key levels, looking for a fake out like we had back here, we are likely to see a sweep of those highs. Now we could get that sweep within this range. So you've got to be careful because it is going to take a sustained break above 152 to really break this market out. If we get a wick above here, that's not what you want to buy. You don't want to be buying a wick, right? You want to be buying a sustained break above, meaning at least one daily close, preferably two or more. And the reason I say this is because if we look at the yen futures, this is going to matter as well. Looking at the weekly chart, you can see where the market is making these lower highs into support. Okay, so on the whole, this looks rather bearish. However, if you'll notice here, that 2022 low on Yen Futures, looking at the daily chart, you can see where this was not tested recently. Okay, so here's that low down here. So let me just move this over so you guys can see it. We've got this low down here in this area. It was not tested back here still not tested. However, look at the distance here on the daily between current levels on Friday and that key level. Now compare that to the dollar yen, okay, which is essentially the inverse. Notice how close Friday's close is to 152, right? There's a lot less distance here than there is on the yen. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that the dollar yen could technically move above this level intraday right? And the yen futures would only be testing that 2022 low. So you have to be really careful here. There's the potential that we do get a failed breakout from the dollar yen above this area before we get something more meaningful, right? So don't chase this one higher uh, if we do get the punch above 152 to take out these equal highs because there is liquidity up here that could be a liquidity trap. Um, if anything, you're looking for that sustained break above here on the higher time frames. Now, of course, alternatively, right? Some really clean levels to play here. If we do get the, the break below here, break below 150.7 down here in this area. And I think we're looking at a return toward levels like 149.7, potentially lower. All right. So more range bound price action here from the dollar yen. We do have a pressing on 152, but you've got to be really careful here. Pay attention to the yen futures and that 2022 support level. All right. And last up, I want to talk about the euro versus the pound here. This is not a pair that I trade or even talk about very often. But I do want to bring it to your attention today because even though this market can be very choppy, right? Yeah, I don't have to tell you that. Looking at these wicks, looking at these candles, it is forming something that is very similar to what we saw back here in July and August of last year. So for those of you who trade, who swing trade on the higher time frames, what you could be looking at here is a move back here toward the range highs. So notice how once the market lost these lows back here, ever since that time, we have seen some ranging price action here for the euro versus the pound. Furthermore, notice back here off of these lows, right? Double bottom back here before we got that move higher. Same thing over here, double bottom. And so far the market is coming off of those lows. So this is a situation where we could see, right? A resumption of this range and a move back here towards some of these key levels, um, like those range highs up around 8750. 
Now, keep in mind though, that a move like that could take months to play out. And this is why I told members too, VIP members, that I have a long trade on here. I, I announced this when I took the trade. So back here, it is in profit. Um, I have my stop down here below these lows. So it's in profit, but this is a case where I am not going to wait for the pair if we get this move. I'm not going to wait for the pairs to get all the way up here toward these highs or even this one before I start taking profit. I'm going to be taking profit along the way at these key levels, knowing that this could take months to play out. But at the same time, though, when you look at the risk reward, right, it's well worth it. Or or if it does play out, it's worth it. Let's say that. Um, but for the euro versus the pound, I think that what we could see for the week ahead, looking at this price action, the reason I got in down here, you can see that we do have a trend line off of these highs and we got the breakout retest down here right? Swept this breakout candle. Now for the week ahead, we do have the market coming into some resistance based on this trend line off of these highs. All right. So that was tested on Friday. So what I think that we could see here for this pair is as long as it stays constructive, which I want to see these lows down here hold, but I think that we could see a sweep of that Friday, Friday wick up here to retest that trend line again, and then potentially a move down here into this area right around like 8540 to 8550. I think something down here could be appealing for a long. Now, that would obviously be an early entry because the higher conviction play would obviously be to wait for the market to close above this area up here, right? Give you that sustained break above pivots like this back here in combination with this trend line. Okay, so something like this would be higher conviction, but I think, and it's just my opinion, not financial advice, but I think if you're looking for an early entry, I do think that this wick right back here could come into play this week. Okay, so again, not a pair I trade often or even talk about, um, and it is a pair too that you do not want to have a tight stop on. Um, this is not a case where you can trade this with a really tight stop because even if you had been buying on this retest down here as I was, and you had a really tight stop, you would have gotten stopped out, right? And it's the same situation here. You know, if we do get a pullback down here or even the breakout, expect a lot of these wicks to continue like this because this is how this pair often moves. But if you trade the higher time frames again, you're willing to have a looser stop, which doesn't mean more risk or even a uh, worse risk reward ratio, right? Because even if you get in this down here in this area, again, not financial advice, but if you were to get in on a retrace down here, right? Or even up here in this area and you keep a really wide stop, you know, if you're targeting some of these levels up here, like this high, ultimately you're still looking at a three to four R trade, right? So the risk reward is still there for a pair like this. Um, this is kind of just a, a side trade, you know, in my opinion, it's not something that I'm too focused on, you know, for the weeks ahead, but if it plays out, then it plays out and it prints money. So we'll see how it goes. But really, I think that the potential here for this market is just this range that it has been in since going all the way back here to May of last year. So basically the last year, this market has been moving within this range. And you can also see where we do have that potential for a double bottom like we got here last year before that rally. Subscribe for daily FX videos and don't forget to sign up with Blueberry Markets, deposit $100 or more, trade at least one lot and you will get a 30% deposit bonus plus lifetime access to our VIP group. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will talk to you again on Monday.